Okay, let's take a look at one last point for closing out for the night. So we know that magnetism is an ether modality just as electricity and gravity mass are. So we have dielectricity and magnetism as the two fundamental co-principles of the ether and of the universe. We have charge, discharge. This is the dielectric field. It is polarized. Radiation, polarization, same thing. It is spatial. Centrifugal, convergent, centripetal. It creates space. Everything that gives mass, massiveness, matter, either in the inner atomic or in the chalkboard, my hand, the camera, anything, is due solely to magnetism, discharge. The entire empirical universe is propped up by space, which is created solely by discharge, polarization, the radiation of dielectricity, which terminates into the creation of magnetism. We know that a magnet has macromagnetic preponderances because of the coherency of dielectricity in creating a soft magnet by using a large magnet, a, a powerful magnet, and striking an iron bar, or from dielectric capacitance increase, which causes the incommensurable system within the, the, the magnetodielectric conjugate system of the magnet. Magnetism does not drive magnetism. Magnetism does not attract anything. Dielectricity causes either voidance or counter-voidance. Proving this is very, very easy. You'll say, well, prove it. Stop talking and prove it. Well, I will, trust me. Not in this video, however. Down here we have mass and gravity. Up here we have electricity, the product of phi and psi. Magnetism and dielectricity necessitated for the creation of electricity. This is nature's electricity. This is what is driving the inner atomic of every atom that you were taught. It was 99.9999% etc. etc. empty space. It's nonsense. It's BS. It's absolute rubbish. Just in the creation of electricity, the inner atomic and the picometer of any atom is enormous amounts of dielectricity and magnetism. Everything over here is spatial. Everything over here is counterspatial. Positive space. Negative space. What are we trying to get at? Mass gravity is spatially accumulative. We're talking about space now. All radiation is spatially accumulative. Everything over here is positive space. This is radiation. This is discharge. This is charge. Termination. Electricity and magnetism. Termination. Dielectricity and special galactic formations in mass gravity. Electricity is spatial because it has a transverse component due to it being the product of magnetism and dielectricity. Spatially accumulative, but its field is counterspatial. Dielectricity is counterspatially accumulative and its field is counterspatial. Magnetism is spatially accumulative and its field is spatial. Grass, mass gravity has a centripetal field but is spatially accumulative. You notice this? Look, the two co-principles as posterior attributes between dielectricity and magnetism have properties of both. Mass gravity is spatially accumulative but its field is centripetal. Same thing with electricity. It is spatially accumulative but has a counterspatial field. Dielectricity is accumulative and its field is counterspatial, both in field and its accumulation. Magnetism, of course, is necessitated to have both a field that is spatial and it accumulates spatially. What are we getting at? I mean, isn't this simple? Let's make the entire universe really bloody simple. Let's take a look at the 99.9% .9 quote-unquote empty space. Let's look at one atomic orbital, for example. This, when all of those atomic orbitals are just snapshots. Here's one. Wherever you see this double hyperbola in an atomic orbital, that is polarization. That is magnetism. 
All of these, they don't exist like this, exactly like this. This is just a snapshot. A super instant snapshot of what is going on in the atom. Obviously, this is all going at superluminal speeds, so this is just a snapshot of motion. Anything that is spatial is moving. By definition, it necessitates, it must be necessarily so. This is our dielectric. Some of the more complex p orbitals, wherever you can see, some of them look like this. We have our magnetism here and here, complex snapshots of the interatomic. The notion that the inside of an atom is 99.99% empty space. Well, what do you mean by empty space? You know, other than the particles, that everything here is just nothing. Nothing's going on between the picometer, the charging boundary. The intersection, just like our AC current lines between magnetism and dielectricity, and this is all spinning and interacting at superluminal speeds, we are getting charge. There are no discharged particles, there are no pixie dust particles in the universe. Okay, these are not little discharging particles. Okay, there's no little balls flowing down the wire, little tiny electron BBs. All over Heaviside called this the psychosis. Charles Proteus Steinmetz says it was insane. And it complicated the matters of understanding the electrical current in the AC system and understanding the fundamental principles of the universe. So. Let's look at this really simple again before looking at our AC current. Everything over here is our positive space. This is counterspatial. Its field is counterspatial. This field is centripetal, counterspatial. This one has spatial accumulation. And this one has spatial accumulation and a spatial field. So, in the accumulation, and its field is counterspatial. This is mass gravity, here we have magnetism, here we have dielectricity, and here we have electricity. We know we get electricity, phi times psi equals E, dielectricity terminates into magnetism, the creation of mass particles. That is why mass gravity and electricity has properties of both dielectricity and of magnetism. It is literally that simple. Electricity terminates as, not into, magnetism by discharge. Dielectricity and stellar formations and galactic formations terminates as the creation of the mass particle. It is literally that simple. This is why nobody reads quantum BS, because it's convoluted nonsense and poppycock. It is just a miscomprehension of the supremely divine principles. Several people like Tesla and Russell and others understood this. It's not that complicated. It is simplex. It is increasingly compounded. Not simple, but it is simplex. Charge, discharge. If you don't understand this, you're never going to understand what a magnetism is. Before closing this last little video series out tonight, we have to look again at the end on of an AC current lines going down your street and down every town in the USA. Looking end on on our AC current lines. Here we have our electrostatic, our dielectricity between the AC lines. Remember, these are just two wires. This isn't a magnet. Counterspatial, centripetal, inertial. And between those AC current lines, we have, like this, our circular magnetism. Let's make it look accurate, since I'm not a very good at drawing on a chalkboard. And it's really late at night. Hmm, this is starting to look like something. Remember, this is the, not my view or my opinion, this is what the AC current lines look like. Here we have our AC current wires. Here we have our magnetism circulating around the AC wires. Now let's draw our magnet. Oh my god, look at that. Here we have our magnet. Here's our dielectric inertial plane. Now all we have to do is add gyromagnetic precession. We have to force all of the dielectricity concentrated at the center, which it already was in the AC lines, but 
since it's a free binding system, it wasn't concentrated in a, in a binding system like the physical magnet. So we have to have to add our centripetal because it is a reciprocating conjugate system in the binding magnetodielectric high capacitance in creation or coherent in soft iron from magnetic induction of a more powerful magnet. We have our centripetal magnetism. We've concentrated our dielectric there. And we have our gyromagnetic precession, which is too complicated to talk about right now. So we have our centrifugal divergent, centripetal convergent. Here we have our magnet. Oh my god, look! All you have to do is just take the end section of an AC current line system circuit and you can draw the magnet. Convergence, divergence. See this block wall here? It's not a block wall, it's dielectric. This is what is driving the magnetism. Magnetism is radiation. It is the necessitated anakye, as the Greeks called it. The necessitated radiative byproduct of the charging dielectric as created from increased capacitance in the creation of a permanent magnet. Soft iron, neodymium iron boron, doesn't matter. Here we have our magnet. The only thing you have to add to a magnet, apart from the AC current lines, is greater concentration of the dielectric at the inertial plane, add gyromagnetic precession, and centripetal convergence. Instead of pure circular toroid system, we have to necessitate centripetal convergence. But you can also see that in the AC current lines. Thanks for watching. I hope I made it simple. I'm obviously not very good at drawing, but you can't have it all. I'd rather have wise words from a bad drawer than a really good drawer that's taught me a bunch of BS and nonsense. Thanks for watching.